All right, let's jump right in and talk more about this. Shannon, I'm going to start with you. Is this what it sounds like when doves fly? I think so. <laughs> um, perhaps Prince said it a little bit better than that. But uh, but I think when we look at what happened today, if you <laughs> if you think about what the market was anticipating, we certainly I think we're prepared to talk about a taper prior to year end. But what I want to stress is that. There was talk of data, 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 data. There's a dependency here that Powell and the rest of the FMOC continue to point to in thinking about the dual mandate. It's inflation and employment. And whether inflation is transitory or somewhat transitory or potentially more sticky, the employment side of the equation is still not back to where it needs to be in their view. And so if you think about dissecting this statement and you separate tapering from rate hikes, and we're looking out well into 2023, I think, still for additional rate hikes, then the market should anticipate a lower for longer interest rate environment. And for me, what that points to is potential moderation in economic growth just from a year-over-year -year perspective. And then you couple that with likely this lower for longer interest rate environment. Wow, that really, to me, points to high-quality growth stocks as being a great opportunity in the next couple of years. Let's go to a guy now that was actually in the movie Purple Rain, and that, of course, is Pete Najarian. Pete, I mean, tapering <laughs> is not tightening, and I think that's the key message. Some people right. viewed this at first kind of semi-hawkish. Oh, the taper may happen earlier. The reality is until employment, and Powell hit us over the head with this, bang, 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 that until employment, to Shannon's point, yeah. pops up, we're not going to be tightening, are we? Well, I went to high school with the Purple Man, but I will tell you this. Um, you know, the tapering is going to be an interesting thing, Brian, because there is a divide within the Fed. We know that. We've heard so many on either side of the of this issue that are that are looking for things to happen at a much more accelerated pace than what we're hearing from Chairman Powell. So I tend to always look at the boss, and the boss is Chairman Powell, and I, and I listen to his, what he had to say. And, I, yes, some of these numbers that they are, they're looking at right now, there are certain parts of the market that I think it makes some sense. And I was just listening to Shannon talking about, hey, she's looking for this uh, definitely when she's when she's talking about some of the areas that could be impacted most and what might actually accelerate even faster. If we're lower for longer, I think that many of us already see exactly what potentially is out there, Brian, whether that means we're talking about certain parts of the market in those sectors. But I think there's also a, a just kind of a, a ability to maybe take a breath. And the reason I say that is, you know, everybody's trying to figure this thing out, and it's very confusing, and we're getting so many different mixed messages. But I think when it's all said and done, I think Chairman Powell's going to have the votes to be able to keep things where it is and where he's most comfortable right now, given the data that we've got. We still have to deal with Delta variant as well. Yeah, we do. And, Jim, I'm looking at some research from LPL and some others. They do not believe that we will see interest rate hikes from the Fed until maybe 2023. Would you agree? Um, I, I would agree, but I have to say that the uh, confidence interval has to be pretty wide when you're predicting out, you know, a year and a half from now. I think the major point to drive home, though, is that whether we taper in November, December or January is totally irrelevant to what the market does. That's th those months. They're all the same as far as I'm concerned. And whether the first rate hike is December of 2022 or February of 2023 is also going to be irrelevant. Remember the last cycle you saw the first rate hike in December of 2015, and there were three years' worth of, of powerful gains after that. Now, I'm thinking also, uh, Sully, to how you opened the show with pointing out the records on the indices, and people may be saying, well, it's too expensive for me. I think that's wrong. I think you've got to look underneath the indices mm -hmm. and look at particularly the reopening trades, which still are way off of their highs from back in May. There's a lot of opportunity there. Don't miss the trees for the forest. And Jason, the foot, planning for the show, I sent the team a chart of the forward P.E. ratio on the S&P 500, because even as stock prices have gone up to, you know, to Jim's point, the forward P.E. has actually come down to about 22.1 because earnings were so good. We're not talking about earnings. We're talking more about the Fed. What are you advising your clients to be focused on right now? Yeah. Absolutely. So obviously this year has been about earnings growth. And to your point, Sully, uh, we've seen that this year. And, you know, just kind of taking a step back and looking at the Fed commentary, 
uh, from Chairman Powell earlier today and, and some of the other presidents that we've listened to this week. You know, clearly, as Shannon mentioned, I mean, the, there's two mandates. There's a labor mandate and there's an inflationary mandate. And it sounds like we've met that inflationary mandate for sure. And the labor market has steadily been improving over the last several months. So for me, you know, whether we start to taper now or, or taper three months from now, I think it's all about the velocity in which we do it and the timeline between tapering and tightening. I think that's an important concept uh, to, to look at as we look at it from an investor perspective.